if you own three hundred thousand dollars, you're in the top one percent earners of your entire race. Mm -hmm. That's like buying a house. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me if I bought a single family house, all of a sudden I'm at the top one percent, like I'm the wealthiest person in my entire race. Like yeah. that's something. There's yeah, clearly a something big, wrong. That's a big, a huge gap. gap. Mm -hmm. Medium, average medium household for white people one seventy one, one hundred seventy one thousand right. dollars. Black people seventeen thousand dollars. Yeah, it's like what? Huge, like, huge. huge. So yeah. the economic disparity is like. We know how to, and we've been doing this as a people all our lives, is we know how to mask the pain, mm -hmm. right? We'll right, sing, yeah. we'll, we'll dance, act. Right. It's like we can mask it, but you can only mask it for so long. Right. Jason Coles is a visionary and a renaissance man. If you follow his Instagram, you know he gives out really interesting tips about investments and how to build wealth. What you might not know is he's also a pretty good piano player His latest endeavor is truly his most remarkable one. He created an app called Katika, which serves as a marketplace and a business directory for black businesses. The goal is to play a part in helping to sustain and build a black economy so that we no longer have an excuse to say we can't find black owned businesses. This could be a truly transformational application. I am truly excited to see how Katika could help build black wealth in the coming years. So welcome to another episode of Voodoo Man. I got Jason Coles, also known as J. Cole. Not the rapper, though. The <laughs> entrepreneur, you know, app creator. He does a lot of stuff. I'll let you tell him. What, what is it that, you know, that you're up to these days? So, um, as you said, I'm a developer. So whether that's apps or real estate, I do both. Um, Full-time, I'm an IT manager for a produce company. And then my biggest project, which I'm most excited about, is my newest app called Katika. So Katika is the first two-in-one directory and marketplace for African diaspora businesses. Cool. Katika's lit. It's, uh, when, he, when I heard about the idea that he was working on, I was like, yo, this is fire. How can we help? He was like, well, we need some videos. <laughs> so we linked up and that's, you know, that's where we, uh, we helped him with that project. And I was really happy with how that video turned out. And I'm really Amazing. excited to see how... Katika grows now. What inspired you to create that app? That app was created out of love and frustration. Love for our culture, our people. Um, you know, we have such a, a diverse um, makeup of our our ancestor and culture, and so Katika. Uh, embodies that mm -hmm. and so we wanted to have a platform that was owned by us and also um, displayed the different businesses and services from people around the world of color the frustration part was people including myself constantly saying hey do you know rock upon a black owned right. filled in the blank barber uh, a contractor right. an accountant a lawyer you name it it's like where can we find these things so mm -hmm. I said what's out there we only had Google we only had Yelp and those just weren't efficient. So that was the, uh, the onus for me to start to do Nice. It's, it's very necessary. Um, one of the things that I keep finding myself talking about, one of the main principles behind you know, this whole project is the, the concept of one ownership and the concept of creating our, or building up our economy. Because I don't think that we are the worst in this, in America at least, at, you know, putting back into our community. We spend everywhere else. We're always spending, we're buying stuff. We spend a lot of money, but we don't spend it on us. So I think that that app will, could be revolutionary in, in helping us to you know, reinvest in ourselves. I also feel like there is a movement going on where people are starting to notice that. Do you, do you, mm -hmm. do you feel that way? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, if you just look on social media um, you, and you go on any of them, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you're seeing what I like to call the, the awakening of the black conscience. Right, right. And so people are now questioning things and asking, um, you know, why are things the way they are? Um, how can I, or how can we change these mm -hmm. things? So whether it's people um, becoming young elected officials, there was, there's a huge surge in millennials becoming, mm -hmm. you know, elected officials around the country. You have more uh, black entrepreneurs starting businesses. 
um, every time you, uh, you know, you look up um, financial markets. So we're making waves in, in the different industries. And, and um, you know, as I said, it's it's. It's our time. It's right. our time. I feel so. I, I feel the same way. I feel like this is really the first time really in American history that black people can actually start to create our economy and start to build really build for ourselves collectively with um you know, because every other time, like first we were slaves for a long for a long time. Then we weren't really considered equals. We couldn't you know, we couldn't really own property or own land or they discouraged us through terrorism and, and violence yeah. from doing those things. And then, um, you know, the civil rights movement was also becoming, you know, getting our rights as citizens. That was not equality. A lot of think a lot of people confuse that. Sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. So once we, and that was not long, that wasn't that long ago. Like, I don't think that that was real brief. Like, you know, we all know people that have lived through that time. That's like our parents. Pretty much our parents. Yeah, our parents. I, I always told him, like, my dad was born in 1950, right. which means that, you know. Right, he was alive. He was that. alive yeah. when civil rights, the law was just passed. So mm -hmm. it's like, I'm his child. So, you know, those conversations and things I heard about growing up. Right. And, at, you know, to your point, we're not that far removed. So right. while we have made which, progress with, you know, having a black president mm -hmm. and, you know, having uh, different black CEOs on Wall Street mm -hmm. and making these different inroads, we still have much, much further to go. It's crazy, like it's crazy how they educate us, right? Because like, they it seems like it was a long time ago. Like when I was in school, I was like, oh, well, that, was, that was done, right? Like, yeah. like not even thinking, like, yo, like my dad went to a segregated school, like, yeah, like he there he was, was there was race wars yeah. and riots, like right across right, the right, bridge, yeah, like. right across the bridge. Like they, like you know, people I know went to segregated schools, like. Ruby Bridges, they got a whole movie about it. They play it to you like it was history. She's still alive. Like, she's not even old. Like, wow. it, it's... I didn't even know that. Yeah, like, <laughs> like she's not even that old. Like, it, it's crazy how they paint that picture. Um, I think one of the things that, like, as this movement's going, I think one of the things that's pushing it is the new resources of information. Like, the internet allows you to research yes. so many different things and, and get so many different... If used properly, mm -hmm. you can get, you know, really good information and, and learn a lot. And I think the more we learn about our culture and the more we learn about ourselves, the the more progress that we want to make. The, like, okay. we see the opportunities. We see where the, where the shortcomings were. Now, you said you also develop in real estate. And um, one of the things we talk about a lot is, is ownership. And... Um, I want to know, why, why do you think, besides, like, why do you think now black people aren't owning land, like, or owning property? Oof. How much time we have? Well, as, much <laughs> as, you, as much as you want. <laughs> so, why well, don't, I think that, um, several factors, right? Mm -hmm. So, we're, we're in a, we're in an interesting, unique capitalistic system in, in this country. Right. And so, I'm going to make it even more simple. Information and misinformation. So, people people of color, our first um, introduction to the monetary system, whether it's banking or um, you know anything dealing with with finances, it's usually that first introduction is usually negative, right? Right. You're hearing about um, you know maybe somebody has bad credit, mm -hmm. late on credit card payment, um, uh, you know payday loans right. and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So. For the vast majority of repossession. us, uh, repossession, right. <laughs> right? So the vast majority of us, our initial um, interaction with the banking system or financial system is negative. So by the time you get older and you're, you're ready to, to to you know buy that property, you already have this negative uh, sentiment or attitude towards this institution. So this is why um, the large majorities of us don't have checking accounts. So mm -hmm. That's very simple, just to own, have a checking account, right? right. More of us will rather pay extra fees and cash checks at a check cashing place than to have a bank account. And so part of that comes from, again, it's like, where, where was that first introduction at? So right. if it didn't come from your home or it didn't come from school, you probably didn't hear about right. financing your bank or anything like that. And so now that you're an adult, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I need to own something because I've been renting forever. Right. And so by that time, unfortunately, either you have a terrible credit score mm -hmm. Uh, you don't have your finances in order, so you don't have enough to put down for a down payment. Or you're getting misinformation um, and people telling you that you need to have this whole checklist to buy a property when really you may need a couple of things. You may right. be in a better position than you think. And so 
ultimately it, it comes down to education. So mm -hmm. um, educating education early in school um, with kids, telling um, informing them about the banking and financial industry, having them open up check accounts, uh, teach them about the importance of saving and ownership eventually. Um, but then also kids that are in college because right. that's a, also, that's a, another area where I think the balls drop. They're preparing us to be employees to right. work for employers. employers yep. However, they're not teaching us how to be owners, mm -hmm. right? So whether that's to own your business or to just own your own property, right. that isn't really emphasized. So, you know, that I don't know who has to teach us, but that conversation well, definitely needs to head. I have big beefs with education overall. I mean, from the from the origin of black people in general, like when you're edu when you're introduced to black people in history class. Is from the concept of uh, from the perspective of slavery. Right. Like we don't world history does not start with you know Western Europe, but that's where our history classes start. Like Pretty we, much. Like um, it's it's so you know it's so whitewashed. It's ridiculous. I mean Napoleon said it. You know history is written by the victor, and they've been writing history that way. But they're also teaching you know how to be employees. They also are teaching you how to be indebted to the system. They don't want you to, you know. Oh, absolutely. If you're constantly told that your people were only slaves and sharecroppers, mm -hmm. you were never kings, you never had any type of status mm -hmm. in society, right? then you're psychologically going to think, I'm inferior. Right. I don't I don't deserve these things. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not worth it. And so... And not only that, the people, the other people that you're in school with think you're inferior too. Exactly. And that's where that, that, a lot of that comes from. It, it really does. Subconsciously, unfortunately, but mm -hmm. that, that, those stereotypes and that, um, that line of thinking is, is, is taught that way. Right. Yeah. It's like, you know, all, all those videos you see where they're like, they're picking out baby dolls and which one's ugly and they all say that. Mm -hmm. And all the parents are shocked. Like, we never taught them that, but they don't understand. Like, it's the entire society that we live exactly. in is constantly sharing these images and, and, and telling you these things like and if you're the thing i always say is black people see the same images we we see the same media we see the same we hear the same stories we're learning the same lessons and we think the same way about ourselves because mm -hmm. media has a way of slipping into your subconscious and, and oh, if you yeah. don't check it and if you don't combat it with you know actual information or positive reinforcement then you will find yourself thinking that way too yeah. So I think it's really important that we somehow figure out how to address this lack of education, first about who we are as people, mm -hmm. and, and then about the concept of ownership and how personal finance works and, and how we can better our, our position. Because I think that economic empowerment is the first step towards real equality in this country. Because I think, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm sick of asking, you know, if you're in a position to ask, like, why are they going to give it to you? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we were, I, when it's elect, like, it's time for an election. Everyone's like, you have the whole people that say, I don't vote. I don't agree with that. You got to vote. But there is some truth to, well, they don't do anything for us. And that, you know, why would they? Right. Like, why, and, and when do we stop asking? For when them? do we stop asking? And the, the, yeah. The, the day, I, to your point, or, or I, I've had this, been having this conversation <laughs> like over and over recently because... So Philadelphia has some elections come up and mm -hmm. people are, you know, now putting their bids in. I want to be a council person. Right. I want to be a judge. Um, and they're trying to, you know, uh, garner people's uh, support and votes. Right. The issue that I have, not with the candidates, but with the voters, us, mm -hmm. is after we put these people in these elected positions, we... We fall asleep. We don't yeah, ask them for it. anything. We don't say, hey, uh, we want job. cleaner streets. Yeah. Like, you know, we want to go to an event, you know, or to get our name in a paper or something. But what is the 10 points that that you're right. asking that elected official to do that's going to actually impact and change you can your check community? On. Right. That you can check on, follow up, and hold mm -hmm. them accountable. Because if you don't, then, you know, the same practices are going to keep happening. Right. Special interests are going to get all the attention. All the, the city's well, funds or majority are going to go right. towards their projects right. instead of things for our community. But again, it's like if we and don't speak happens. up and, and say something or don't hold those people mm -hmm. accountable, then we're going to have the same cycle going on. And that's and like, what, unfortunately what's been going on. And like you said, special interests do, they, they're able to get those things across because one, like you said, they have a direct checklist of things that they want to get done. But they also, 
they, I mean, the way it is now, they also put money in. So if we, if we were like, look, we're, we will yeah. back you if you're willing to do these things. And if you don't do these things, we're not going to back you as a community. Right. That would be a powerful statement. Absolutely. That would like that would change the entire power. But in order to do that, you have to one, you know, have some kind of coalition or group, or we have to come to an agreement about what it is that that we need first. And that is a difficult process for right. our community. That it is. So, <laughs> not think, impossible. No, it's not impossible yeah. at all. I, I think it, I think we're on the verge of doing that. But that's yeah. why I think like the first step is to get ourselves to a more equal position of economic power because we spend if we had more money in our community if we owned our communities if even if like you know what happened in Atlanta where you know they I think it was Atlanta or might have been somewhere in Georgia where you know they voted all the judges were black women and mm, like, yeah, so like if you yeah. if you start taking over different areas like that that gives you regional power yes. in that area so now you have a it's not asking for people it's like this is what we want to see happen if you don't make that happen then we're not going to go there anymore. And it's not a boycott because boycott is still a question to me. It's like, will you, could you stop doing that so we can come back there? Well, ima- imagine this. Imagine if, hypothetically, all the black churches in this in Philly, let's just say, mm-hmm. right, they all came together, right? There's right. a separate congregation. All the mega churches come together. So now, let's just say it's 100,000 people, right? Right. Now, that's power. That's power. You've concentrated all of these um, congregations into one voice you can set an agenda and say, okay, what are the 10 points that we want done? Right. And we're going to hold these people. That is power. The The other side of that is, um, or, or recently I, w- I was reading a book and it's more, what I, my takeaway from it was, it's more important to be a kingmaker than the king. Right. And so. Exactly. That's right. exactly what I'm saying. And so, and, that, and then if you look at Washington and the different politicians and how th- things, that's pretty much how it, yeah, it has how it to happens. work. Yeah. It's, it's the man with the gold, makes the rules, yep. and it's the kingmakers that can control the power. Yeah, control the king. It's like, all right, you're mm-hmm. not doing what we want, you're out of here. Who's next? Right. And it's important to sit. And, I, I, you know, like people always say black power, but I don't think people... Power is influence. Like, power is being able, like you said, 100,000 people. That's influence. That means these people are with what we're doing. Right. So if we say, you know, we're not shopping at we're not shopping at any Philly store. Like, say it's a big store. We're not shopping at any Philly department store mm-hmm. until this happens. Right. You're going to feel the impact because we have that influence. So I think that that's what we have to start looking at. We have to start looking at power differently than we do. It's yeah. not like it's not always just about I have a billion dollars I can buy stuff. That's some one form of power. But right. really, even that's still influence. It's, it's a collective voice mm-hmm. because, um, you know, even if you... So, so here, this is one thing that I'm guilty of, or have been guilty of in the past, but I'm, I'm slowly recognizing that it is important to study the past. Right? Yeah. So, you know, I have friends that'll say, hey, we're in 2019, the stuff that, we, that they were doing back in the 60s, you know, those tactics, they're not working now. Mm-hmm. To a degree, that's true and it's not true, right? Yeah. So, sitting in, that might not work, right? Yeah. However... If we were to take that example of the collective voice, right? So mm-hmm. the reason that the Montgomery boycott was so powerful was because Martin was able to get everyone in that town or in that, that vicinity, that, that uh, region, to not ride buses. Right. No one broke the line. Right. Collectively. Right. One voice, that's powerful. Influence, yeah. That's how they were able to change it. So how could we then, okay, fast forward that to 2019. That, we can use... Still use that same collective. However, mm-hmm. now we need to bring in social media and right. different and, technologies to, to and the organize question, it. I think is, is different, right? Right. Um, but that's true. I do think. Um, so I, I get. I think my point is like you can. You have to marry both. Yeah, yeah. Right? You it's always like have, you to have to. Do that. To, to but it's like I mean, you should always look at even if you think that. that it didn't work. You should look at why it didn't work. Right. It's like you know, like like Kobe was talking about that. Like he watched. Like people want to watch the game tapes where they hit the game winner. But you should watch the one where you missed and realize why you missed or why why this turnover happened. Like that's almost more important right. than looking at when you won. When you were, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I mean, you, you can learn lessons from that. Um, I do think though, like you know, like Martin with the the bus boycott, that was that's a different battle than we're in now. I think now I think the battle is is for equality and not for like being treated civilly, not for being 
you know, having civil rights or being considered a citizen. And that battle is different because there's no real, it's not necessarily a tangible thing to be equal. Like, I'm not sure how you would measure that. You know what I mean? Like, it, he could say, oh, now we can vote. All right. We won. Or now they desegregated the buses. That's the victory. Now what we're looking for is, you know, equal equal job opportunities, equal pay, equal, you know, stop red lining. Like, I, I would actually argue to say that the same stuff they were fighting for in the 60s, it may not be as... Right, it's the like, same thing. We're still yeah. fighting, like, Eric, uh, yeah, Eric Garner is still fighting cases... On gerrymandering, mm -hmm. voter suppression, mm -hmm. um, you know, so yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of sad. It's like that's you would have thought true. that we settled this stuff back in the sixties. It's twenty nineteen, and they're still in the courts. Well, that, I think, but I think that's what I think. That's my my main idea is like I don't want to fight those battles. I want to not have to by becoming our own entity. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like if we had enough power, right? If we sure. we wouldn't have to ask them to do that. Sure, like, for sure. Like if we if we ran a city and there was a police police brutality, we would just fire them. Like we wouldn't have to ask somebody I'd be like, no, you're not working here anymore. Like, right. but we don't own we don't own that. We don't have that amount of influence. We don't have that that base, that capital, that you know that center. Mm -hmm. We don't have like a Chinatown. <laughs> I mean, we don't have anywhere like mm -hmm. that for us where we can come and say this is ours. That's why you should say I was watching. I was up like five in the morning. Randomly, and the uh, YouTube video, you know, they just mm -hmm. bring up ones after you watch, watch one. Somehow, the, the video from it was a talk from the ambassador to the U to I'm excuse me, the ambassador of the African Union to America was talking, giving a, a talk, and I at the scene, I don't think it's a great speech, but anyway, one of the things that she talked about was African Americans are people of color, we're the only people on this earth that don't have a sovereign nation. Yeah. So Chinese people will come here, they'll work, they'll go back to China or mm -hmm. send money back to China. Send money back. Send, just go down the list. I, mm -hmm. I won't go through all of them. So at what she said so her point was at what point will we repatriate or at least recognize our tie back to our homeland? All right. Um I think one I think that's a great economic opportunity. If you look at what Acon's doing, mm -hmm. he literally is building an electric uh, grid, grid in Africa. Grid, yeah, in Africa, yeah. Creating a billion dollar company, mm -hmm. multi-billion dollar company. So the opportunities are there. Africa's the last frontier. Is it, it's, the question is now, it's like, when's the American black conscious going to, African black conscious going to wake up and say, hey, like, I, so, I live in America, but I can make money over there. The same right. way that the Chinese, you know, they'll come over here and make money for a decade and go right Chinese back. Chinese are going to Africa, like, too. Oh, yeah, they're already there. Yeah, they're, they're in Nigeria. They're right. in South so Africa. That, but that's part of the idea. One of the, you know, that kind of leads me to where I was going to go later, but we can go there now. Identity. Where, yeah, identity. Yeah, brother. Identity. <laughs> so, I mean, black, black people in America... Don't, we, don't own, we don't own culture. We don't know who we are. We don't know... We don't fit into either one. Like they don't recognize Africa as home. We've never been there. I get that. Right. But you're definitely not a, like American. Like it. Like what? It if, doesn't feel right. So it doesn't like, feel right. Like yeah. how can you? How can you be proud to be an American and be black when you look at what America did to your people? Like that. It continues to do. And continues to do. Like you look at how they treat you. How can you? How can you sit there and be like, yes, I'm 100% proud to be an American? Sit like that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And you shouldn't feel that way. You shouldn't. If if the Founding documents lived up. If if people actually acknowledged them and, and you know all men are created equal and, right. and all that, then America would be right. The, the idea is the, good. The, <laughs> the ideal place. Right. However, it's not. It's, right. it's imperfect. Right. Mm -hmm. We're working to make it better. Right. But um, as a black person in America, we just we have a disconnect. I I've um, I make an analogy to. Um, not knowing who your parents are, right? Right. Well, so if you're, child. yeah, like if you're a um, adopted person, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, you may have, you know, if you got um, great adoption parents, they were, you know, good to you, had a great, um, you know, childhood mm -hmm. and so forth. That's wonderful, but you're still going to have that missing piece. Like, mm -hmm. I know that these aren't my real parents. Like, yeah, they right. did stuff for me, but there's a piece missing. So, but imagine your adopted parents were terrible. Right. Worse. <laughs> even even worse. Right. Flip, flip side of that. So. I draw that analogy with 
black people not knowing their true identity of where they come from. Mm -hmm. So it's like we had this empty void in us. It's like we know we're not mm -hmm. quite, we're, we're born in America, yeah, right? right? We know that people that look us come from this continent that we've never been to. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, I feel like once that connection happens, then psychologically, I think it will do wonders for us as a people. Now, fortunately, because we are in 2019, there is a company that, that's, I think they're like two years old now, um, called African Ancestry. Mm -hmm. So it's different than Ancestry.com, Ancestry yeah, yeah, yeah. 23andMe, but this one is specific to Africa. It will narrow down your tribe. Mm -hmm. And so I, I even thought about sending a letter to Cory Booker because he was talking about reparations and saying, you need to incorporate this into a reparations package to have DNA testing done for any black person in right. America. And the government will like reimburse you or do some, something during tax season. Some, somehow they need to cover it. That's a good idea. Um, because they brought us over here. Yeah, we brought this land here. for free. Right. And so that could be their way to, you know, try to begin the, the healing process or reconciliation for black people. But, um, yeah. I mean, that, I mean you yeah. know, rep, we're the only group that never got any kind of reparations, which makes no sense at, at all. all. Um, but, yeah, the identity, identity is tough, man, because, I mean... A lot of people just they just don't identify with Africa as being their home, and I'm not you know I I'm not sure how you can paint that picture for them. That's why I think Black Panther resonated so much. That's right. the real reason yeah. Black Panther was so it's, popular. It's almost like what whether you want to or not, it's like you look in the mirror, you're African. Right. It's like you have to yeah. like it's when you listen to music. Um, the food, well, that, that, yeah. like it's like it's all tied back to Africa. Well, like, you know, that takes me to like, why, I even, why I called this whole thing, you know, the Voodoo, Voodoo Man Project. Because you know, Voodoo started in West Africa. It was you know mm -hmm. called Voodoo, and it became Voodoo. There's a lot of different types of Voodoo okay. as well. Um, but when they took you know people from West Africa, they kept that practice with them. It's not like written down. There's no written book of right. Voodoo, but. Um, they practiced it in in uh, in Haiti, like it was really big in, in the in the Haitian colony, or the, it was a French colony then, it wasn't Haiti yet, no. but um, it was really big there. And it really that when they they were being forced to be Catholic, but they hid like voodoo in there, and then they switched all the way over to just straight out practicing voodoo, and they have like voodoo priests. And French got upset with this, so they started killing voodoo priests because they they were essentially preaching that instead of, you know, the um, that version of Christianity which was pacified, which was you know your life's gonna suck here, turn the other cheek, you know it, you'll have a better afterlife. That's you know that's perfect stuff for a slave. Right. They started telling them like it's ancestor worship. Your ancestors wouldn't want you to live like this, mm. which was spreading because I mean you know everyone's looking for a reason to not be a slave. Right. So once they started killing the priests, that kind of lighted the fire to mm -hmm. allow Haiti to become the first successful slave revolt. But then from Haiti, it went to New Orleans because that was another French mm -hmm. province. And there it became, you know, something different because New Orleans was like a, a melting pot in, in America at the time. And it's really interesting to me because it kind of lost its identity. Now when people think of voodoo, they think of black magic, they think of evil, they think of, you know, devil worshiping and... I think that's kind of what happened to black people. Like we got taken from this land, we got lost in the journey, and now there's negative aspects that are attributed to us that aren't necessarily true, and we mm. don't even know what the truth is. Mm. So that's yeah. where the whole name Voodoo Man came from. I like that. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it's all wrapped up in identity. It's all wrapped up in not knowing what we are, who we are, where we came from, mm -hmm. and that's a tough wall to break down because I mean. People are trying to just survive, like they. <laughs> right, it's like you're trying to be, you know, te teach me about myself, but I right. gotta figure out how I'm gonna pay for, you know, the lights and right. put food in my kids' mouth. Which is why I think it's really imperative that, like, here we start, we have to have some kind of jumpstart program to give our, like, it, it, and if either gonna be us or if the government gave us reparations, which I don't have. I don't have a lot of hopes in that because no, I just don't I'm see not it happening. Yeah, yeah. It was just why I said not monetary, but like something. Yeah, but like, I don't see like them doing anything. I, yeah, like we, I, I like really we. Know. I was saying this the other day. Like, why are black people paying taxes? We did. <laughs> like, why, like, why do we have to be like we did all these hundreds of years of slave labor? Like, you couldn't give us no tax breaks. It, it was crazy. No free college. No free health care. No, no nothing. Literally three three months ago in Poland, 
Mm-hmm. They made a law that said that all the German Polish people had to um, give up their lands or compensate the Polish Jews mm-hmm. from the Holocaust. Right. I'm like, so in 2019, they are still getting yeah reparations. Meanwhile, back in the U.S., black people haven't gotten, like you said, yeah. no free education, like. No, nothing, no, no land, no, <laughs> no, no land, land like, no, no 40 acres of mules, no like we didn't mule. get anything. And, and I was actually, it was funny, I was thinking about that the other day. So whoever was before, oh, so it was Lincoln. Lincoln mm-hmm. says you get 40 acres of mule. Gets assassinated. Jackson comes Andrew in and Jackson, goes. No, nah, we we have that. Was, he's, got rid of every, he's like, yo, I, I keep telling people, man, like, it's he, Trump. It's Trump versus this. Yeah, Trump's predecessor was Andrew Jackson. Like, people don't, if you don't know, like, presidential history, look at what Andrew Jackson was about. Like, it's, like, it's so similar in so many ways. And he it's had, crazy. His, the yeah. amount of scandals he had at the White House was ridiculous. Like, there was no social media at the time, and he didn't have Twitter. Mm. But, apparently, he was out there getting drunk on the lawn, like, at the White House. Yeah, it was, That's he was, gross. he was nuts. That's and But, and, you know, that was the era where the Klan started rising up. Like, once black mm. people got free, because we got, a lot of people, I used to ask myself this as a kid. I was like, once slavery ended, why didn't black people do more stuff? I would think you'd be excited. But they don't, they don't necessarily, the timeline is, is misconstrued. Because a lot of times they'll jump from, from Abraham Lincoln to Martin Luther King. Like, they skip yeah. the whole, <laughs> everything that happened there. Yeah. Like, they just skip. And really, black people went to work. Like, Frederick Douglass, who was Abraham Lincoln's advisor, ran for president. They were starting businesses. They were building cities. They yeah. were At every, one point, they were in Congress. They right. was like Then it yeah. got pushed all the way back. Because of the Reconstruction era, that's when the Klan came up because they were afraid that they yeah, were going the white to lash game. Yeah. lose their country again. Like yeah. they were like, "We're losing the country," and that when that fear, it, it fear is a powerful tool for for ignorant people, and they they you know terrorized us, made sure that we you know couldn't go to the polls, couldn't didn't exercise our rights. You know, they pushed us out of you know any kind of community or positions of power we were in, and. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not. It, the interesting thing is, we. This is where you learn from history. I'm not doing that. Like that was not happening. Yeah. Like if they try, if they try to start that movement back up, I think they'd be met, met with a different resistance now. Oh yeah, well you can already see it. Like aside from black people, you got white people, Antifa. Yeah, they're like right. They are shutting down fascism and KKK, which is why I'm very optimistic for the future. Yeah, is because I think there are more actively um, uh, just humane people, people that are just genuinely, um, they see everyone as equal, mm-hmm. right? Um, they see color. I hate when people say I don't see color. I hate that. You see color. Yeah, like, I want you to see my sense, color. Yeah. But treat my colors the same as your color. Right. That's all we're saying. And so... I don't even have a problem yeah, with, like, yeah. different cultures. Like, you know, a lot of people are scared of cultural assimilation or inappropriation. I think it's good to acknowledge different cultures and to experience different cultures because that's what broadens your mind. Like yeah. I, like I've been to a lot of different places and seen like a lot of different you know types of celebrations, types of birthday parties, types of weddings, types of dinners. That helps me recognize. It shouldn't be scary though. I think some people yeah. are scared by what's different. They're like, well, what's this oh. mean, or why do you do this, or if you're different from me, somehow that threatens. It doesn't threaten what I'm doing. Right. I I enjoy that you enjoy that. Like that's good. The world should be full of diversity and different ideas and different people Absolutely. um but that i think is not everyone's mindset mm-hmm. and I, that is a i think but that i think that's a educational thing too i think when you don't know about stuff you're, you're scared of it it also doesn't help where when you have a president that stokes fear right. every other day excuse me not every, every day mm-hmm. every two minutes yeah so it's like we were making progress, making progress, making progress, and then 45 well, comes in. Not to say that, like, clearly these people had these feelings and sentiments mm-hmm. all along. Mm-hmm. He just allowed them to, to be open with it. I'm happy about that, though. Right. I am, too. Yeah. Because I actually think more good is going to come out of his mm-hmm. presidency than bad. Right. 
It's like we had to go through this. It's like Barack showed us what we could be as a country. Right. He's showing us if we go the polar opposite, what right. we could go back well, to. Yeah, I think he. But um, I think enough people are like, no, we don't want to go back. Yeah, we don't want to go back to to that. But I think that it's important that we know that that sentiment. Is, I think people didn't realize, and for the black community specifically, I think we felt like the country was further along than it was. Yeah. I think that right. we were feeling like, oh, we're, we're good. We, you know. That's in the past, but right. I think now we're coming. To, we're we're forced to come together again. More like, all right, we need to unite and huh. ha- put together some goals. We're not as far along as we thought. Yeah, we got. We have a lot more work we have to do as a. And as I a put community. that on the, on the media because you turn on the television, you're you're seeing you know NFL stars and Real Housewives and you mm-hmm. know. So the perception is that black people we're doing great. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going. Uh, there's the low, uh, the unemployment rate for black people has never been as low uh, right. in history. I'm like, right. I'm like oh, wow. we must be doing all right. Yeah, right. It's like, then you see a stat where it says, if you, if you own $300,000, you're in the top 1% earners of your entire race. Mm-hmm. That's like buying a house. Mm-hmm. So you're telling me if I bought a single family house, all of a sudden I'm at the top 1%. Like, I'm the wealthiest person in my entire race. Like, yep. that's something. There's yeah, clearly that's something big, wrong. That's a big gap. a huge gap. gap. Mm-hmm. Medium, average medium household for white people, one seventy one, one hundred seventy one thousand dollars right. Black people, $17,000. Yep. It's like, what? Huge. Like, huge. huge. So gap. the economic disparity, it's like, we know how to, and we've been doing this as a people all our lives, it's, we know how to mask the pain. Mm-hmm. Right. We'll right, sing, yeah. we'll, we'll dance, act. Right. It's like, we can mask it. But you can only mask it for so long, yeah. Because the reality starts to set in, um, and times when when it's the stock market's doing great, you know, it's more bearable. The but funny thing but is, when the market goes down, oh, it, it's it's going to get real ugly. It gets it gets terrible. Like we're the first yeah. people hit, we're the last people to see, yeah, to see any effects when it comes to the market. But because of that, a lot of black people don't think it affects them. Like they don't even pay attention to that stuff. It's like you know that happens every day. Like what's that? What's that gonna do for me? What am I? How how's that gonna affect me? So you don't pay attention to to bigger economics. I, you know what bothers me about one of the things that I'm upset with the black community for is the belief in conspiracy theories and the, the like the ease in which they're swayed into. Yeah. And I'm not sure if that's every community, but we just can't afford it. So like I get upset. <laughs> like I mean like. <laughs> I think that's a general population thing, but we can't afford to be caught up in being only fourteen percent. Yeah, it's like we can't afford we to can't like afford to be have sidetracked, for right? Three believe months. in ridiculous conspiracies yeah. about you know, like flat Earth stuff. Like I can't stand that stuff. But that that line of thinking allows them to get tricked into political, like the the when they were re- revealing the Russian scandals, right? They said that they were targeting black people. Yeah. Like they're targeting southern black people. Yeah. And that bothers me because why why would we fall for that? Why are we why are we not aware of why the, can't we the okey doke. Right. Like we we can't, we have no time for that. And I think a lot of that has to do with our you know, just our ability to discern and learn real information. It's, it's a it's a difficult thing. I don't even know how you fix that, but I'm not sure either. I know <laughs> one of the areas that um we definitely need to concentrate on and I see Katika playing a role is just education period, mm-hmm. like literacy. Let's talk about where the name Katika comes from. That's a really cool Yeah, so um so Katika is so when I when I was trying to name this company, I knew what the vision was, I knew what the idea was. I put out a survey, there was three names. I mm-hmm. said we could have something like um what was the first one? Greenwood, mm-hmm. which is Black Wall Street. Right. Um called Black Wall Street. Or call it Katika. Uh, Katika actually was got the second highest votes. It, mm-hmm. it wasn't the first one. Greenwood was the first one. However, I wanted to pick a name that was that could tie everyone together because mm-hmm. again, this is the the vision is to tie our diaspora together. So I wanted it to be African, mm-hmm. right? Because um, people that are African won't know what Greenwood or Black Wall Street is right. in America. So that's how we got the name. Um, the name Katika means inclusive. Mm-hmm. Again, tying into bringing everyone together, unify. Um, and then, you know, after that, two-syllable word, um, hard consonant, yeah. starts with a K, and then 
Um, I'm big but on the, it, on the, it was it was but the name when I, K. yeah when I, I like when, that. I, when I saw the <laughs> name I was just like this is it this is perfect it, yeah. it just fits so. yeah it's a really it's a really strong name and it's like I think you know the idea of being inclusive is really important yeah. um, and, and I will say real quick that I know we've been talking a lot about in America um, but what we're going on what's what's going on in America has been or what went on in America also occurred throughout the rest of the world. Yep. So I was recently in Brazil. Same it thing. seems like wherever there were black people, there the was lowest. an agenda to mm-hmm. create, uh, you know, segregation um, where they were second class citizens. And then, you know, whoever the leading class was, was meant to be superior and to rule mm-hmm. them. So that's in Europe. That's mm-hmm. why even in Africa, yep. um, for instance, in South Africa, they're starting to take their land back. Yep. They're kicking out the white farmers, and they're mm-hmm. saying, "We want our. This is our land." Right. Europe is go, is throwing a hissy fit. They're talking about That's throwing it. sanctions mm-hmm. on South Africa. But at That's the end it. of the day, they did the Haiti. Yeah, they. Um, I think once the continent comes together and unifies, and that's the purpose of the African Union is to essentially create a replica of the European Union, mm-hmm. but for Africa. Right. Um, I think once that happens, then we'll be. You know, as a people in better It's shape. funny, he keeps uh, preemptively going where I'm going. Like, I was, just, <laughs> I was just about to talk about the idea of pan-Africanism and the how it affects everyone in the globe, but he already knew that, so I have to ask the question. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very true, man. It's like everywhere around the world, the darker you are, the worse you're treated. And yeah. that is it's definitely an agenda. And it, always, it wasn't always like that. Right. Like, that's what a lot of people don't understand about world history. For a long time... Africa was the hub of culture, was the center of, you know, class and, and you know, Mansa Musa, the wealthiest man alive, like he, mm-hmm. Timbuktu, where a lot of scholars were, were educated. People think Timbuktu was a made up place. Yeah, I saw a whole, there's a whole what? article about, they were doing a poll on, um, if, well, where is Timbuktu, or is it myth, like mythological? And they said it's a, it's a myth. Wow. Like Hogwarts. <laughs> but, 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 wow. <laughs> more people probably think Hogwarts is real. It's real. Man. <laughs> we got a lot of work to do, bro. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it's, it is an important thing to, to tie together um, the, the entire diaspora. Because I mean, like we speak, I was speaking about Haiti a lot, but a lot of people don't understand that the Dominican Republic is on the same piece of land as yeah. Haiti. Yep. And they don't see themselves as connected, which is bonkers to me. Yeah. It's like you even have dark skinned Dominicans being I don't want to say race, but it's racist. Just it's prejudice, racist. yeah, extremely racist or prejudice towards their own brothers. Yep. Who's, they could probably be cousins. Yep. And just happen to Well families. Know. I mean, if you yeah. talk to a lot of Hispanic families, they'll say like, you know, if they're if you're darker, you're treated worse. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, it's colorism. Yeah. Like that happens in America too. Right. Like you know, it happens to an American. But there is, it's kind of it's, put on extreme. It's, level. it's on an extreme level to the point where even in like you were saying, like in Brazil and South America, the dark skinned people are bleaching their skin. Like that's super popular. It's not like a few. Yeah. It's like a huge industry because people want to be lighter, and that is yeah. just sad to me. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm light skinned uh, by uh, by a lot <laughs> by of genetics. Yeah. yeah, by genetics, like it's not by choice, but. Like, I think that you should love who you are. And I don't think that, you know, you being more melanated should be an issue or in how you live in your life. And like, the, um, I can't remember what the girl's name was. She was on um, the, uh, the radio show talking to Charlemagne the God at, about how it's harder for a dark-skinned Hispanic, you know, rapper. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. he was, he, I think he came around on that issue. But it's very true. Like, it's difficult to, you know, like black people, it's difficult to get in positions of influence, positions of power difficult to become a celebrity like if you think about hispanic you know actors and actresses you got jennifer lopez real light antonio banderas real light sama high real light and i'm not I, hitting on them no no, no. Look, i'll make it even easier just turn on univision which is yeah. the spanish station. spanish station right you won't see one person of color on there right it's like i'm like and the whole there's so many countries that's are spanish-speaking countries uh, of people of color you can't find one can't Yo, and listen. And I watch this station, this channel every day, and it just dawned on me when I'm like, and it's crazy because there's been here. so there's been so many times in my life where I saw what I thought was a beautiful black girl, and she was Hispanic. Not to say she wasn't, you know, beautiful. I was just conf- <laughs> like, it was. They looked so similar. I was. I thought she was African American, but she yeah. she starts speaking Spanish, and I'm like, oh shoot. <laughs> but 
is I don't know why they don't see the connection and there's a disconnect. Like they don't want to say, you know, they're, you know, a, there is a movement that's happening where you know Afro Latina, Afro Latin yes, movement is coming that. around. It's coming around. And um, even uh, John Leguizamo just came out with a stand up. Um, I can't remember the name of it. It's actually a funny title. But in the very beginning of it, he draws a big pie graph. And he goes, mm -hmm. Hispanics, this is what we're made up of. And he puts 25% black. Right. He's like, all of us, we got it in us. Like, yeah. It's, and he went through the whole chronology, you know, where it's they It's big facts. Stuff. I mean. But it's it's true. It's you know, I was playing me. some Fela Kuti, like, on, on IG. And a lot of people were saying that it sounds like um, salsa or samba. Um, but those music, that music. It all comes from Africa. It all comes from Africa. <laughs> like, you know, like, what, a lot of times... And it's it's just there's a little bit of a, a different sound, but the every like a lot of the cultural stuff originates there, and like I don't know why, what the disconnect is. I'm not I'm not sure where it is. Yeah. There's a disconnect with, and this is what I guess it goes back to the identity thing with black people here. No one wants to be African, like outside of Africa. Like I feel like there's like a. We like I think there was an effective strategy yeah. of making Africa seem third. Yeah, world. Was, you took the words right out of my mouth. Like yeah. they made it seem that was like a, yeah, yeah, it was like they made it seem like it's a third world country. They don't have any food. The children are starving. Everybody lives in the huts. Yeah, everyone lives in the huts. There's huts. no running like, water. There's no electricity. That, that's there's no internet. People think of Africa. They're yeah. like they're starving kids in Africa. That's yeah. What, yeah. like there's cities in Africa. Right? Like you know, one people think Africa is a country. Yes. Like they that's don't the first even issue, right? like first issue. Africa is a continent and it's way bigger than you think. It's like, 55 countries. Yeah, it's like yeah. you have no idea how big it is if you're, if you're unaware. And um, most maps scale down scale the down, size of Africa. Right. Like, On purpose, huge. again. Yeah. yeah. Like it It really is. And that's part of the, like when you start looking at the the global war on, on melanin, I guess. I don't know what you call it. Like that, it starts even at the map. Like the map they make shows Africa being smaller than it is. And that is crazy. Yeah. It just is crazy. I don't know. Someone, I was reading an article today and they were saying, um, why, what did black people do in the past to deserve this? And I don't think there is any real reason other than, I mean. Greed. It's, it just comes it's down greed. to greed. Actually, I, I, go, I go a step further than greed. I don't think it's necessarily greed originally. I think greed was eventually the tool to mobilize it. Right. I'll take that back. I think they were scared. Yeah. They I, think, I think the Europeans got on a boat. They looked down and were like, holy crap, there's a whole continent of dark people. Well, they Then they went, they looked over east, and they were mm -hmm. like, oh, there's a bunch of Indians over here. All right. More dark people. Right. I don't know if they made all over China, but they were like, they, they're not white. They're light-skinned, but they're not right. white. So I think that they were I just like, they felt, very, felt like they were in the minority. And so it's like, we can't beat yeah. them in numbers, so mm -hmm. we're going to beat them psychologically. I think there's an intrinsic fear, though. That I don't, I don't know if it's ever really been addressed, and I don't know if I've ever said this part on camera because I know me and Ryan have talked about it. But I think there's an intrinsic fear that comes with, uh, and it, I mean, you know, I'm gonna edit this, so if it sounds crazy, yeah. but I think there's an intrinsic fear that, um, like passing on your genetics, like you want your kids to kind of look like you. Yeah. So I think once you saw some intermixing, like especially in Italy, Italy was kind of that, that's why Italians are you know, olive complex, like they have the olive complexion. Mm -hmm. I think th there's a fear of that. There's a fear of being wiped out. Like you'll hear it in like, in like, the, you know, the Klan and the Nazis, like this kind of yeah. idea of keeping their, their, their race pure. Mm -hmm. But really that to me, that's a fear based reaction because like, if you, if you take a black person, a white person and you mix that baby, like everyone considers that baby to be black. Right. And I think that is the, Real core fear. It's inevitable that well, like, it, it, I, it's true. I think that, uh, but I think that that's where that comes from. When you start looking, you're at, right. when yeah. they started looking, they're like, "Yo, if we if this continues, if this continues, like, like we're we're, we're going to be in, we're going to be gone." Right. Like as a, and it's not necessarily true because I mean, you know, the baby's lighter. It, it takes on all qualities, but yeah. the the way you look at yourself in the mirror, you're not going to see that necessarily in your kid. And I think that is a fear, a genetic fear. Of wanting to pass on your traits, like you know, I played basketball. I hope if I had a son that he want to play basketball, I would hope that. Right. You know, what I mean? like <laughs> I think that's how, what that's you know. I think they they're afraid that they would their lineage would be lost. Like and that, you see yeah. that happening with interracial couples. Like that's always the fear of like when they when they mm -hmm. you know marry each other. They're like, well, you know, this baby's gonna be. They have all these terms for it. <laughs> and I, I think that's where it comes from. Like I think that's their initial hardcore yeah. like crux of why worldwide 
there was this war against because the darker you are like the darker and the interesting thing about Africa though is there's all types of shades of shades yeah. like yeah. which is also crazy but at the top you probably have your darkest and that's probably who they saw right. first right yeah. yeah so yeah it's interesting but um but then greed greed took over when they started yeah. the trade and they realized that plus it's just an easier marker I mean if you have an indentured servant and they're white how can you tell if they run away if you're black in an all white country you know like <laughs> It's an easy marker. Right. It's an easy. It's an easy way to put a mark on somebody. Like, oh, they, you're not supposed to be here. Right. That's that's how. It's still how it is. Walking to an all white bar. Like, hey, what you doing here? Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> it's just too accurate. Yeah, that's just how it is. But yeah. this, that's part, one of the things about living in a country that's not your own. So, one of the things that I think we need to do more in our community, it, well, that will help us heal, is there's a movement going on with you know self-care and mm. black black mental health and black men's mental health yeah, like that's yeah. i see that coming up on the rise um, um us you know taking care of ourselves and and trying to check our 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 privilege i guess i mean like it's hard for i guess it's difficult for black guys to say that because we feel so disadvantaged but we don't recognize the disadvantages that our women go through and like, our, here's a perfect thing. This R. Kelly thing, man. Oh, oof. So I see so many people trying to defend Just, yeah. oh, and justify or deflect somehow what he's doing. And I, it made me realize, like, at first, the first thing I posted was, um, I can't believe it takes this to get people to cancel R. Kelly. Because right. this was old news to me. Like, it wasn't any new, anything new. But when I started looking around at the reactions on social media, I realized that, one, this needed to happen again because apparently people weren't paying attention. And two, we do a terrible job in our community of taking care of black women. We've done a terrible job. Like, I was looking around at all the women that are hurt and they're writing responses in the way that we were talking to them and not having their backs. It was bothering me. Hmm. So I, I don't know what we... What do you think that we could do but what do you think that we as like young black men need to do to help, you know, one, take care of ourselves and check ourselves and two, to, you know, help the women in our community feel, you know, just feel better? Woo, that's, that's a, a loaded lot. question. That's yeah. A lot, right? <laughs> um, because, man, yeah, there's a lot of avenues that, uh, that this could go down, but I think... I was just speaking in general terms. So, like, as as a black man, um, I feel like we're we're put on this like um, we're put in this place where we're like supposed to be the strong, like unbreakable, like um, just like man's man, right? Right. And so, with that personification, it's like you can't show any weakness. Mm -hmm. Um, like I can like clearly hear my dad mm -hmm. telling me when I was a kid, like, like men don't get emotional. Like don't, right. don't ever show your emotions. Yeah, you, like, ever, like, I, you ever noticed this though? I, I just went to my dad's like, right, oh, yeah. <laughs> Every dude does that. Like, yo, we're grown yeah. men. Why do we got to do our dad's voice? Like, right. like, like if I tell my dad, it's down here. Right. It's like, I'm going to I'll tell you that. Yeah. Like, but, but no, but you know, the he right, but he was speaking right. Yeah. It's like I, I like tried to like get into this yeah. macho thing, right? right. Show that bravado, and so that's that puts us or kind of like pins us into this one box. It's like you can only be tough. You mm -hmm. you can only you can't right. be vulnerable. Right. And so as a at the end of the day, we're like we're human beings. It's like we're right. gonna we're gonna cry. The, we're gonna right, have emotions. It's thing. like so if you're if you're not able to express those things, it's like. One, you're going to have internal conflict, mm -hmm. um, and then two, when you see your, your your reaction to how you see the environment is going to be different too. Right. Um, and then two, that whatever you see in your own household mm -hmm. is how you're going to interact interact outside. So so if you don't see you know love between you know your parents mm -hmm. or like that you a little playful of, this or that, it's right. like how do you know what that looks like when right. you step outside your house? Right. And so, you know, yeah, what's I, interesting I think, oh, what you me. said, though, like the concept of, you know, the concept of being vulnerable, you know, of, of having emotion 
these are qualities that we attribute to women. They're right. seen as female qualities. Exactly. Right? So I think we even say like no homo. Like, yeah, like no like, homo. You gotta be a man. Yeah, it's like, like you can't. Yeah. It's like oh, why why you acting like I hate people? Why you acting like a female? Like right. Exactly. Like well, like what is like. like one, what, what does that mean? Like, what, what does that mean? Like, like to have emotion, to to feel something, right. to show that you feel something. Exactly. And I think you know everybody will tell you repression is not good, but one of the things that that does is it disconnects us even further. There's already a divide between men and women that is that we're trying to figure that out as a society, right. just in how we communicate and what our priorities are. Um, but it furthers that divide when you then. Think of everything as females being soft or mm -hmm. or Completely something that yeah right. something that you can't even associate with. Like I'm not even I can't identify with any of those. If you try to repress all that, then how can you communicate with you know a, a woman with if you're trying to right. like how can, how are you going to be able to have any kind of meaningful relationship if you don't you know want to want to even understand that part? Exactly. Like, and it, so it's like you're already at a disadvantage yeah, like right. before you even begin. So I think to your question, I think those are the conversations that need to be had early on mm -hmm. or just that whole mindset needs to change um it's like yes you can be what, what what's my man uh jeffrey lori emotional intelligence yeah emotional intelligence like yeah. you have to you know be conscious and aware like yes you can you can be vulnerable you can it's okay to be um, yeah, you have to you have to know when when where why you're the thing is we don't know why we're feeling what we're feeling right, and then right, we, right. we 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 oftentimes react in in ways that we don't realize we're emoting it's all like it's like goodwill hunting dog like we all mad we all mad Damon and it's like we we don't know what we're doing like we're just out here running away from trying to run away from problems that we're not even aware we have um, it's it, I don't know it just bothers me so much to see because girls have our back. Like black women have our back. Like they they show up, and I guess I, a lot of some I say that and people say, "What about all those girls talking about you know men ain't this and men ain't that or they ain't th and yes that's out there." But to me, I, I feel like that's personal hurt, something that they've experienced. Mm. Because if you look at like when one of us gets shot down in the streets, who's organizing the rallies? It's always black women. If if we if we say you know we want to boycott this, black women will be there. Every time, we we don't show up for them like that. Yeah, I, 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 I and I definitely hear your point. I almost want to say that that. So now I'm going to why, why is that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was thinking about this the other day. I'm like, who are the who are our black leaders, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's a good question. It's like, just say in ten years, Farrakhan's going to be gone, Cornell West's going to be gone, mm -hmm. uh, Eric Dyson's going to be really old. So it's like, okay, and those are like professors those are or like intellectual clergy, leaders. intellectual yeah. leaders. Yeah. Like, who are the financial, the political, the civic leaders? Like, right. the ones that we had in the past, we know what happened in them. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I think as black men, we were almost like castrated in a way. Mm -hmm. It's like, we're all going to speak up, but... but not, right. not really that much. That's like, exactly what I'm or saying. Or we're going to play it safe. Like, there's, a, there's a lot of fear. Whereas there. black women, we're just, they're like, we're going to speak our mind. We're like, you can't, it's like we're already, you know, right. at the at lowest part of the, or at the bottom of the totem pole. It's like, there's nothing else you can do to me. So I'm going to say or act that's out. That's exactly what it is. And so it's like, it we need to find our strength in them almost. Like, mm -hmm. It's like, they give us strength. So it's like, um, well, one, I think we live in fear. Mm -hmm. And I'm guilty of that, too, because even some of the thoughts that I have for critique, I'm like, well, maybe I shouldn't say that on video. It's right. like, I got to get out of that. It's mm -hmm. like, somebody got yeah. somebody has someone to say has to say it because like, yo, if we it's, all it's say funny, it's fear, then know, nothing was, will ever I was change. Reading, I'm, I'm, about, I'm close to finishing James Baldwin's um, The Next Fire, which is I think should be mandatory reading for everybody. Right. <laughs> Not just black people. Everybody should read it. The Fire Next Time. Yes, The Fire Next Time. Shout out to my mom. Black women, hold me down. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> But um, he, the way, what, speaking of what you were saying, the way he wrote in the 60s, at the, before, you know, he was considered a citizen, the bravery in which he talked about how he felt in a white, white America yeah. was inspiring to me. I'm like, yo, where is the people talking like this? Where is people that you know, look like me talking like this? You might get one or two, you got, let me see, Mark Lamont Hill maybe? Yeah, and they kicked him off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, still, and all he said, was, yeah, and he didn't even. It wasn't even that. Israel Palestine should just be, yeah, be yeah, equal, be like, equal. Like, like no, 
get off. But yeah, get off air. Like you're what? lucky you can still teach it. Like it's crazy. And this is what and this is what I'm saying. Like we should be as you know, we should have his back. Like I, you know, I. I did what I could yeah. online. If he if he said we hold a rally, though, I'd be out there because yeah. I mean we we can't allow that. But there's there's so few people that are willing to really say, and we have more outlets than ever. Right. We have more outlets than ever. We have you know YouTube channels and and people that are actually saying something that stuff that makes sense. Because again, like I can't get down with the whole like conspiracy stuff that because people be going weird with. It. Like, yeah, so it was like <laughs> I, I just. Some things you can question, but then, like, when you start to go off in, like, the whole yeah, like, tangent, it's like, all right. Well, that actually, again, that feeds into your whole idea of fear. There's a lot of people that do the conspiracy stuff, like, where they're like, you know, they just, there's not much, there's not much you can do. There's only a few people that own the world, and, you know, you're lucky, like, you shouldn't be doing this. That, to me, is a defeatist attitude. If you, if you believe that, if you believe that there's nothing you can do, you, you're not going to vote because it doesn't matter. You're not going. You, you can't really advance your station in life like, if you do you this. Here? Yeah, like <laughs> what are you gonna do? Everything, every idea someone has, you're like, well, that can't work because it is. Then you're so afraid. You're immobilized by fear that right. you're not even willing to try anything, and that is worse to me than anything because that means you're defeated. Yep. And there's a lot of us out there, like you were saying, like they feel castrated, they feel <laughs> defeated, they feel like there's nothing that we could do that's going to really move the needle or right. really create progress because you know. If you went like you said earlier. When we look at the civil rights movement, a lot of the stuff we're still fighting for, and it's been a long time. But that doesn't mean we stop fighting. It doesn't mean well, that it's only over if we, we never, quit. Exactly, right? we're, we're never giving up. So, well, I think we have to re. One of the things I hope to do with this is to reignite that 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 fire and trying to you know fight for change and own some stuff and you know do something different. So, um, yeah, I think that was a pretty good conversation about relationships and stuff. I was missing that one. I did that a couple of times with a couple of girls, but I haven't got any guys to talk about that yet. Oh, so yeah. that was that was necessary. Yeah. Um, anything you want to talk about? Anything you got on your mind? Mm. What's going on? Let me talk about R. Kelly. Um, R. Kelly stuff, crazy. Yo, I don't. I just don't get it. Yeah, that's wild. I'm I mean, just like, but it, it and it, I think it's difficult because I was talking to my mom uh, about this earlier. I was like. I think people are having a difficult time with it very much like they had a difficult time with Bill Cosby mm-hmm. because he's not just an individual. It's like what he produced is ingrained in our culture and, is, and almost a part of us. Like. That's true. But you know, so, the but, and and people are having an issue separating it. Mm-hmm. And, or some, or, no, no, no. Some people are trying to separate it. It's like, no. They're together well, this is, because this if you go, right. well, I just like his music. I don't like, I don't agree with what he did, but mm-hmm. I'm still going to listen. It's like no, the person who made the music committed the right. crimes, and so you can't like either. And okay. I, like even with Bill Cosby, it was different to me than R. Kelly because Bill Cosby's Cosby Show was about uplifting a nuclear black fam- family. Right. If I listen to R. Kelly say, "My mind is telling me no," <laughs> but my body, like that is a direct <laughs> reminder right. of what you're right. what you're accused of, like yeah. the, like. It seems like you're ready. Like these songs that people are, like are now that like, right now we like, go back now, and listen to yeah, this stuff. Like, you're like, like, what's he talking about? Like, like, I don't see nothing wrong with bumping grind. Like all these all these lyrics are forever aging. Nothing but a number. Like, oh my see God. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he, he put it so clearly in his music. Yeah. Even his name, like he started calling himself the Pie Piper. Like this, I, was, I noticed this then. I was like, this is a guy who plays music to lead children away from their families. Like this is the mythology you choose to yeah. call yourself. Like it's, it's so blatantly <laughs> that tied is crazy. Yeah. to who he is. That it's like he's been saying it all along. Yeah, it's like, like, it's like he's just... a serial killer who wants to get caught. He keeps leaving clues about what, what I'm doing. <laughs> My album's called The Chocolate Factory. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like what's wrong with these plays? Like, and, and so I mean, I understand sometimes separating the art. Like I hate to say it, I like Woody Allen movies. Like, his films are innovative. They're smart. He's a terrible dude. Yeah. Like, I, that, that, does that mean I can't learn from his films on how to create an a, a intricate plot or use different plot devices to tell a narrative? I don't think that does. I don't think so. I wouldn't buy his movie. Right. But his movies also don't say exactly what he did like R. Kelly's music does. So, I mean, it's... it's I don't know. To me, there's. I think one of the things we often miss is context. I think people like to live in a black and white world when most stuff is gray. Like most stuff is 
You gotta, you gotta figure it out. Most people don't want to think. Well, that's it. So this play that was epic. So you can listen to. I can believe I can fly. No, I can't listen to any R. Kelly. I can't do it. I don't. I know. I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I can't do it. I, like his voice now. His voice is just. Is, I always think like every. I don't know. I don't know how. Everything I think is about a teenager. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> how old is a teenager? <laughs> When you say See? teenager, you say, yeah, when you say teenager, uh, like, how old uh, do you think? <laughs> What's wrong with you? It's bad. in the name. I just, yeah, I just, I don't know. Like, you know, there's there's allegations about, you know, Michael Jackson. Apparently, there's a documentary coming out about him. Um, but his stuff is, I, it's always been so mysterious. Like, some of the kids say, well, my parents made me say it. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, but yeah. I, I'm not, like, I can still listen to his music because... Well, Mike is... <sighs> See now, with Mike. See now, it's different, right? It's a, it's a little different. One because Thriller is about zombies. Well, not just that. <laughs> I just look at him as a, as like his life, like right. Mm-hmm. Well, his life is completely different. Yeah. Right. So psychologically, Michael isn't all there. Like, well, but neither is R. Kelly. To to be honest, right. R. Kelly was molested too. But, but to we'll come back to him in a second. Yeah. But for Mike, it's like okay, basically he was a child. He mm-hmm. was a child in a grown man's body. Yeah. So if you're a Child in a grown man's body, you're going to want to be with kids. Right. That's why he had an amusement park. Right. That's why he is like. Had bubbles so and he I, had like, yeah. Right. So I'm like, so when they try to conflate the two, like, oh, well, he had kids over, he must have been sexually abusing them. That's like, a grown yeah, man. It's not necessarily it's like, true. It's not necessarily is true. Is it weird? Yes. Is it that's is, weird. Is, yeah, is it that? Like, if I have my kid over there? No. No. Well, never, yeah, <laughs> never, I would not send my kid there. No. But is it, is it that? No. Right. Like, it's not, doesn't necessarily mean that. Right. But like, I can look back at the situation, but like, okay. See, and kind of an- so analyze now you're it. analyzing because it's context. This right, right. I'm putting it, right. right the context around it. Now, if, if the kids were like, if there was like a rape kit done and they were like, yeah. oh, it came in positive, then I'm right. Mike's uh, the devil. Like, yeah, but if, none or, of that ever but happened. Mike, the only thing that ever came out was the Mike kids say singing, he did this. Then weeks or months later, the kids come out and say, hey, my parents made me say this. And it's like, ah. yeah, like this. That's that's what's weird about it. Like, yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of different issues. So I mean. There's there's different contexts that you have to take into take into like account with, you know, all the allegations. I, I I it's hard for me in this era. Like like somebody gets accused and the next day they're canceled. Like I hate the cancellation era because yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to do your due diligence. Like it's too easy for like someone. The, I was just listening to NPR and they were interviewing Kevin Hart, mm-hmm. and that whole situation like that's it. That's a good situation I want to talk about because. I've been in a couple of arguments, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm very, I believe in equality. I, I have no issue with the LGBT community searching for equality and striving for equality in, in their in their own way. And you know, I have no issue with that. I'm all for it. I consider myself an ally. I do not understand the beef the beef with Kevin Hart. I didn't either. I don't. And I've had this conversation, and you know, people have. I, the thing to me is. He may not have given a formal apology that people wanted. Right. But his behavior changed. Yeah. Which is more important to me. Like, it's more important to me that over a nine, nine to ten year period, he didn't do exactly. these behaviors. He didn't have any... A, he, for a whole... After it was brought to his attention, the, the entire next decade, he never made another right, homophobic yeah, joke right. again. Right. If you can't see the growth in that, or like that, That's, this man changed, right? And you're still trying to harp on twe- old tweets or right. an it's, old comedy mm-hmm. sketch. It's like you're looking for the issue. Like I think what happened was like a generation ago, you had your first like some of your first Africans come to America, mm-hmm. and so they got like bullied, they got picked on, African booty scratchers, yeah. this and that. Well, then they had kids that went to school with us, mm-hmm. right? I have cousins that are half Nigerian. Right. And so they're now indoctrinated more so in an American culture, but also bring a little bit of that African culture with them. Mm-hmm. And so they, maybe the teasing went down a little bit, but they were more Americanized than Africanized. Right. Um, but they also made that transition to where once African um, culture did start coming back, it's like, oh, well, my homie, his name is Tochi. Or, mm-hmm. you know, you, you started becoming aware, like, oh, I've been around African culture and people and, and food and things right. like this whole time. So when Afrobeats comes out, <laughs> what's up, bro? You want to get in the shot? So when Afrobeats comes out, you know, African Americans are like, oh, this is the best thing since sliced bread. Right. And so, um, 
I think it's going to. I'm saying all that to say that I believe that we're going to be the generation that bridges the gap, brings us all together, bridges that gap to where the ultimate goal of Katika is to create a transatlantic economy. So just like we had a transatlantic trade slave trade slave, slave trade, trade, excuse me, um, we can flip that model, put it in reverse. To where it benefits us. Well, black people have always been the purveyors of cool. I like to say, like we create cool worldwide. Okay. Like everything we do, jazz, rock, hip hop. Like we create culture that is cool, and that's a product. It's a big business. So I mean, so once we truly learn once we how to own it, own it, bottle it up, and sell it, we will be on our way. Yes, yeah, that's, that's how you, that's how you get it going. And if you can, if we can use Katika as distribution for that, yes, 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 <laughs> that, that is the goal. That's the goal. <laughs> that's the goal. So let everyone know where they can find uh, all, everything. Yeah. So um, you can follow us on our social media. All all the handles are at Shop Katika. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Shop Katika, and then our website is shopkatika.com. Um, also, you can download the app in the Apple Store and Google Play Store. Just type in Katika and it's free to download. So I think that's it.